Greetings, brethren. Happy Sabbath, this 10th day of May, 2014. It's the, uh, whoops, sorry about that. It's the uh, 10th day of the second month, Ziff, also. This much the month, the calendar dates are matching up on both the Hebrew calendar and the old pagan Roman Gregorian calendar. But happy Sabbath to you. I know that some of you have had a rough week and some rough evenings sleeping. And I'm asking God to change that for all of us this coming week and to help us by giving us a refreshing Sabbath break today. For services today, first I'll be repeating the very short clip, video clip, by God's end-time apostle and most faithful servant for this time, Herbert W. Armstrong. In this short video... Mr. Armstrong shares the understanding that God gave to him to give to us regarding the end time Elijah to come who, who came, and that will correspond, what Mr. Armstrong says will correspond or harmonize with what you'll hear in the article that I'll be reading the first portion of this morning or, or this afternoon depending on where you are and whether you're watching live or by archive recording. In the article from Jeffrey R. Nielsen that I'll be reading a little of, you'll hear how Jeff, Jeffrey Nielsen provides some biblical support for the fact that the end-time Elijah may come again in an inspired or miraculous way. We'll go through that right after this short video by Mr. Armstrong, and then we'll see part three of the animated movie short on the original Elijah, the Elijah who lived during the days of ancient Israel. At the end of today's service, I'll share with you the modified lyrics to Don't Give Up on His Father. That's, that's the way I've retitled the song taking the modern-day song of David's soul, Don't Give Up on Us, Baby, and revising the words so that, th so that the words in the song we sing uh, give us a message of, of hope for the elect, for us, the scattered brethren of God's church in these latter days. Now, here's the short clip by Mr. Armstrong on the end time, Elijah. prophecy I would like to read you in Malachi, the fourth chapter of the book of Malachi, beginning with verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. It's talking about the day of the Lord, and before that time, someone will come. Elijah the prophet lived a long time ago. He is gone and dead. But someone will come in the power and the spirit of Elijah. John the Baptist came in the power and spirit of Elijah, but he was not Elijah, preparing the way for Jesus Christ at his first coming. He was a voice crying out in the physical wilderness of the Jordan River and preparing the way for the physical Jesus, born of the human virgin Mary and laid in a, in a manger because there was no room in the hotel, coming in his humility and coming to his physical people, Judah, and to the physical temple at Jerusalem at that time built of stone and wood and precious stones. But now a voice is to cry out before the second coming of Christ, coming in power and glory as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to rule the earth and to deplace, replace Satan and displace Satan until he will not be here to deceive the world any longer. And to put an end to this trouble and this slaughter and this great tribulation that is coming upon this world. And some voice has got to come in the spiritual wilderness of modern Babylon or confusion and call the people out of this Babylon. As you read the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation, come out of her, my people, and prepare the way for the spiritual Christ to come in power and glory as the King of kings and the Lord of lords and to come to his spiritual temple, the church that will rise and meet him in the air, changed from mortal to immortal, their faces shining as the very sun, their eyes as flaming 
flames of fire. I tell you, my people, we're coming to that time. And it's time for a voice to cry out and to tell the people that we're coming into that time and to say, come out of this Babylon of religious confusion of our day and believe the word of God. Because there are many that are preaching something altogether different today. Okay, friends, there was Mr. Armstrong in that short video clip. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Certainly a voice crying out, as Mr. Armstrong did, like, like an Elijah. He did a wonderful job of that. And now I have an article for us by Jeffrey R. Nielsen. And I've got some scriptures I need to put on the screen, and I need to resize them. So just for a moment, let me put another slide up on the screen. This is a slide we often use during our, uh, or sometimes use during our, our uh, Nightcast news program. Because in this slide, with this slide, okay, good, I got that little change made. With this slide, we uh, decide which news programs we're going to play for the evening. Not so much from that as more from, from this part of the slide that just show the first six seals and most of the news stories relate to one of the first four seals from the book of Revelation 6 and all right I'm just using that just to uh, just to be able to uh, change my screen size in the background so that these slides with scriptures I'll be using with Jeffrey R. Nielsen's article I want to read just the first part to you today, and then we'll be reading more parts of it the next couple of Sabbaths, because I don't want to, it's a long 53-page article, so I don't, I don't want to bore the heck out of you. Not that it's not well written, it's very well written by, by Jeffrey Nielsen, but it's also, uh, some of it's a little, you know, got a lot of scriptures, a lot of things to think about, and some of the things that Jeff says may hit some of you, you know, bow uh, in a way that you hadn't thought about before. So I, I want to take it easy on you and just give you a little bit of this at a time. It's a thesis that Jeff wrote uh, as a Bricketwood student back in the um, hmm, in the early 70s, maybe the late 60s. A thesis he uh, no, that would he he would have done that in the early 70s, I believe 70. Now, let's see, Jeff was in there from 63 to 67, so that would have been in the mid-60s. Uh, now, this, the uh, thesis is entitled, Why Only? Well, what, now, wait a minute. I'm, I, I just said something that's going to be confusing or sound not correct. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, you just said that wrong, Steve. Jeff was a student at Brickett Wood between 63 and 67. He wrote uh, this article in more recent days, in fact, somewhere around 2002. So, all right, with that in mind, because the question he's, he's asking now in this thesis is not one that was, uh, would have been thought of back in 60, between 63 and 67. I mean, just, there, there wasn't, there wasn't teachings and reason to be thinking of, of what Jeff is saying in this article back in the mid-60s. But today, oh yes, there is indeed. Uh, his title of this, of this uh, article is Why Only Herbert W. Armstrong is the End Time Elijah. And he subtitles this, Herbert W. Armstrong. Now, before I read you the subtitle, friends, I want you to understand that... Uh, the way Jeff subtitled this is not at all a put down. Wait till you hear the rest of the article. I also want you to know and understand that I'm still studying the things Jeff wrote in this article. I'm fascinated by them. Spent lunch with two brethren a couple of three weeks ago. We spent a whole day at a buffet restaurant going through this article. We actually we didn't go to the buffet line that much. I think we surprised the waitresses. We just put some tables together, gave ourselves lots of room to spread out 53 pages of Jeff's article and just go through it. We even underlined it and circled things on the article and 
looked up scriptures in the Bible and just hashed this out for six or eight hours there at the table, there at the restaurant. I'll say six hours because we did give ourselves a couple hours for eating. And, uh, and we hashed it around pretty, pretty good. And for the most part, I think all three of us, at least two of us, very much agreed with most of what Jeff said, and the other parts we're still uh, celebrating it. We're still cogitating on it. We're still meditating and thinking on it and studying some more. But uh, the subtitle that Jeff gives this article is Herbert W. Armstrong claimed to be the final Elijah, and he says this article proves that he was not only who he claimed to be, but that God ensured that no one else can be this end-time prophet. Now, I know some of you may be saying, I don't know about that, Jeff, but listen to the rest of what Jeff has to say before you hammer back with some of the thoughts you might have. The bricket, but you know, before you hear the rest of it, that you might have before hearing it all. The Brickett alumnus student who wrote this article has, uh, well, I've mentioned his name already for the article. Uh, he does some other things for me where he humbly says, Steve, you know, no need to mention my name. In fact, I prefer you didn't, but this article is one he's put online. It's available for the public to read. And if, I think I said Jeff was in college between 63 and 67. It would have been 64, between 64 and 67. And uh, you can see his name on that article that's online, so I, that's why, Jeff, I, I mentioned it while I'm reading part of it here today. The article begins with a reminder that Daniel the prophet was told that certain prophecies given to him could not be understood until the time of the end. Even Daniel could not understand the prophecies that God gave to him to write down for us. The end time would be characterized by three unique things. Uh, an extraordinary increase, let me put that slide back up on the screen that's got Daniel 12 verse 4 on it, gives you two of those things. One of them being an extremely, uh, extraordinarily, an extraordinary increase in and acceleration of travel back and forth an unequaled explosion of knowledge, and the third thing is many people being purified spiritually. The author cites Daniel 12, verses 1 through 13, and I just had verse 4 of Daniel 12 up on the screen, full screen for you, still behind me over here. This verse shows two of the three conditions of the time of the end, Another verse that is important to the article that I'm, I'm reviewing with you is Amos 3 and verse 7. Oh, here first, though, I've got a slide with uh, verses 9 and 10 of Daniel 12 that shows the third characteristics, or the third condition of the end time. Many shall be purified and made white and tried and along with the first two conditions of the increase and, and acceleration of travel back and forth, people going to and fro, and an unequal explosion of knowledge. And then uh, this next slide, Amos 3 and verse 7, says, uh, since, since God does nothing without first revealing it to his own prophets, the understanding of Daniel's sealed prophecies would have to be first understood by a prophet of God, Jeff says. And when that happened, it would signal that the end time had started. In the closing verses of Malachi, the last book of prophets in the Hebrew Scriptures, and the last book of the Old Testament, God promised to send Elijah the prophet in the end time before heaven visibly intervenes in world affairs. Malachi 4, 
verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And verse 6 goes on. Do I have verse 6 here? Yes. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. After John the Baptist, who was also a type of Elijah, was dead, I'm, I'm still reading to you, friends, from Jeff's article. Another Jesus, uh, or, I'm sorry, I'm, let, me, let me read it correctly. Back up just a moment. After John the Baptist, who was also a type of Elijah, was dead, Jesus predicted that another, then yet future Elijah, would restore all things. Matthew 17, verse 11. That prophecy also showed that after Jesus and the disciples whom he trained were off the scene, there would come a great falling away from what they taught, which would necess uh, necessitate a restoration by the final Elijah. The New Testament shows there was a progressive departure from God's truth. The elderly and last of the original first century apostles, John, wrote in his last epistle that Diotrephus disfellowshipped genuine members from the true church while promoting heresy. I'm going to stop for a moment from Jeff's article. Whew, that sure sounds like a, fam uh, a familiar recent um, situation, does it not, friends? Going back to Jeff's article, we can now see that the first century falling away was in duality of prophecy, only the type, the forerunner of the prophecy for the greater 20th century falling away that has occurred since 1994. The little falling away or rebellion of 1973 was not a type of the great falling away as was the first century falling away in, in that the 1973 rebellion did not have a Gentile in charge of a congregation who was disfellowshipping genuine true believers in the sense that the first century church had with Diotrephes and as did the sixth era church with Joseph Tkach, a Gentile who put out true believers from the fellowship of congregations under his administration. Now, friends, those were my words. I typed in theirs. Now back to the Elijah article. So if anybody's upset about what I just said, don't blame that on Jeff. Those were my own words I inserted into my notes for reading Jeff's article. Back to Jeffrey's article now. Long after that first century falling away from truth, Elijah's restoration, however, would only come in the end time prior to the day of the Lord, about 1900 years later. This is more than an, an Elijah article. Friends, I'm breaking off from the article for just a moment. This article also goes into Zerubbabel and Joshua also. Next week, I plan to cover the Elijah portion of this article more fully. And I think I'll break off from the article at this point. And let's, uh, let's repeat the clip. I need to put something else on the screen for just a moment while I do this. And then let's repeat the clip of Mr. Armstrong speaking about the end time Elijah. And then after that, I will have for you, excuse me, then I'll have after that for you the, end, the uh, part three of the animated uh, video on the original Elijah, the Elijah of, uh, of, uh, of, of the uh, times of ancient Israel. And then at the very end following that, we'll have that song where I've revised 
the words a little to say, don't give up on us, Father. And uh, when I come back, I'll encourage, after, uh, after we play that song, I'll probably encourage you to, those of you who might be skilled in that kind of thing and want to have some fun with, with that song, to, uh, if you can, make something very edifying out of the lyrics, revising it even more than I've done. And uh, I think I have a version of, well, I'll, I'll, I'm, let's talk about that song when we get to it. We're going to do, repeat this clip by Mr. Armstrong. Then we're going to play the um, video I have for you on the animated, um, from the, the, anna, the annotated movie, part three of the original Elijah. Then we'll do that revised song, Don't Give Up on His Father. Here's Mr. Armstrong. One more time. This is just two and a half minutes, so I know you just saw it at the beginning, and this will be good for you after hearing this brief portion of Jeffrey R. Nielsen's article. I think it'll be good for us to hear this two and a half minutes of Mr. Armstrong again. Mr. Armstrong? Now, another prophecy I would like to read you in Malachi, the fourth chapter of the book of Malachi, beginning with verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. It's talking about the day of the Lord, and before that time, someone will come. Elijah the prophet lived a long time ago. He is gone and dead. But someone will come in the power and the spirit of Elijah. John the Baptist came in the power and spirit of Elijah, but he was not Elijah, preparing the way for Jesus Christ at his first coming. He was a voice crying out in the physical wilderness of the Jordan River and preparing the way for the physical Jesus, born of the human virgin Mary and laid in a, in a manger because there was no room in the hotel, coming in his humility and coming to his physical people, Judah, and to the physical temple at Jerusalem at that time built of stone and wood and precious stones. But now a voice is to cry out before the second coming of Christ, coming in power and glory as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to rule the earth and to deplace, replace Satan and displace Satan until he will not be here to deceive the world any longer and to put an end to this trouble and this slaughter and this great tribulation that is coming upon this world. And some voice has got to come in the spiritual wilderness of modern Babylon or confusion and call the people out of this Babylon. As you read the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation, come out of her, my people, and prepare the way for the spiritual Christ to come in power and glory as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and to come to his spiritual temple, the church that will rise and meet him in the air, changed from mortal to immortal, their faces shining as the very sun, their eyes as flaming flames of fire. I tell you, my people, we're coming to that time, and it's time for a voice to cry out and to tell the people that we're coming into that time, and to say, come out of this Babylon of religious confusion of our day and believe the Word of God. Because there are many that are preaching something altogether different today. And, friends, because there are many who are preaching something different, here, my predecessor and myself on COGTV.org, we like to continue... Since they've, God has caused them to be so well preserved, we'd like to continue playing the recordings of Mr. Armstrong. It's as if he's speaking from the grave and still alive. And when we get further in Jeffrey's article in the next couple of weeks, you'll see how Jeffrey shows some scriptures that make him believe that, that God may very well resurrect Mr. Armstrong to do the end times a rubble job. And, you know, God could well do that. That's not beyond his ability to do. And now whether he will or not, and whether, whether uh, the strength of Jeff's words really saying that God has no other choice are true or not, you'll have to decide for yourself as we read the whole article. So I hope you'll be back with us next week. Even if you do something else where you go meet somewhere else on Sabbath, come back, watch us from the archive next week. If you're seeing this now, I just invite you, invite you to do that. And 
what we're going to do next, let's go, I promised you the part three of the animated movie on, uh, on um, the original Elijah. And then after that, we've got a fun Sabbath-type song for us. Here's part three now of the original Elijah. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshai king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back. Elijah replied, 
What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Okay, friends, that's the end of part three. Next week, we'll plan to play part four from this animated movie on the original Elijah. I hope you uh, are finding this edifying. And, uh, and since the end time Elijah relates to this or original Elijah, you know, it's good to do some reviewing of the original Elijah. I wonder if possibly the what the Pope in the Roman Catholic Church, the Popes, I should say, through history, have done in the way of uh, anointing kings and emperors, like they, like an end-time Pope will do with an end-time emperor who the Bible calls a beast. You know, they're just counterfeiting that or, you know, imitating what God had his bona fide prophets do as he had Elijah anoint several in various positions of kingship and so on. Okay, let's close now, friends, with um, that song where I've revised the words a little to say, don't give up on us, Father. And uh, friends, I you know, look, I'm not a song lyrist, but I just modified a few of the lyrics to get it a little more in in harmony with what I thought might be a, a good message for us during a time when we are are scattered and any of you who are skilled in in songwriting lyric writing that kind of thing and want to have some fun with this for the for the rest of us in an edifying way if you can make something very edifying out of it I think I think I have a version of music for this that uh, is going to make it through the, the YouTube content ID analysis this week. We'll see. And uh, bear with me. I'll turn my mic down. I'm going to sing along with you as I put this. We'll have the lyrics on the screen, the lyrics that I've created. If some of you can improve this, I encourage you to email your improved words to me, and we'll, maybe we'll try this do this again next week. It'll give you something to sing. If you don't like it, we're that's it for today. You can go ahead and tune out and... Uh, Hope you'll join us again, not only next week, but especially for the primary thing I do. This is just a service we do on the Sabbath for those that, that appreciate it. But the main thing, the job that I was asked to continue, is the Nightcast News program that we do Sunday through Thursday night. We usually make it a half-hour program of the, of the current day's news related to the Bible and prophecy. And uh, we work hard on that through the day to dig out for you so that those of you who work a job somewhere and come home tired uh, or you just got other responsibilities and duties that you have to do at home so that around dinner time, if you want to watch us live, you can just pull out your TV dinner and your, and your Budweiser or whatever you have, or a nice glass of wine or your grape juice, whatever you have with your meal and for the evening and kick your shoes off, kick back, and just watch the current day's events and then be rested up and ready to go hit your knees and pray as, as Jesus Christ asked us to do or instructed us to do in Luke 21, verse 36. I'm going to just read that to you before we close with that song because he instructed us to be watching, and he meant watching world news. Of course, he meant watching ourselves, too, but he tells us that in other places. In this place, in Luke 21, 36, he was specifically talking about the things that would lead up, that would, that would uh, work out the events that he had just been describing that relate to the seals of Revelation. 
in answer to the disciples' question, what's going to be the sign of your coming? And he told about end-time world events that would be increasing. And he said, watch for these things and pray about them. And, uh, in other words, Christ was asking each of us to become an active part of end-time world events through prayer. Because God is moved by prayer. Sometimes we've even been warned to be careful what we pray about. God just might do it. And he says in verse 36 of Luke 21, Watch you, therefore, after telling them all the things that would be happening that relate to our chart from uh, the first from Revelation 6, the first six seals, after telling them, this, especially these first four seals, to watch that you, and pray always, that, and you know, pray about these things you're seeing, these world events, and, and putting your heart into it, and if you're seeing famine somewhere, pray for those poor people affected by it, put your heart into that, and pray the part of the model of prayer with some teeth and guts and Heartfelt concern for people, thy kingdom come, O Lord. We need to replace the evil that's going on in this world under man's attempt to govern himself, which God wanted to write the lesson in 6,000 years to show mankind cannot govern himself without God. But I'm leaving this slide up for just a moment because I want you to notice where we are. We're now in between the fourth and fifth seal. The first four seals are happening at an increased and accelerated rate today. The next major event in world prophecy is seal number five, the Great Tribulation. And in this verse 36 of Luke 21, Christ is telling us to be ready for seal five by telling us to watch and pray always. And he's saying that one of the reasons I want your heart into your prayers about these first four seals is that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. And the fifth seal that's coming, be able to escape the great tribulation, which he mentions in part the earlier part of Luke 21, and escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And so, friends, I'm encouraging you to tune in on our program or have some good way, if you spend the whole day doing it like we often do, digging out the significant and important stories that relate to the Bible and prophecy and then put your heart into your prayers about those world events and be asking God, thy kingdom come with some teeth in it that you may be accounted, and brethren, I hope all of you tuned in today will indeed be accounted worthy to escape that tribulation that is coming, and that world news is showing more and more is just ripe and at the door. The, fig, the leaves of the, of the fig tree are ripe, are, are ripening. All right, if you want to sing along with me, wonderful. If, if you want to just watch this time, fine. I kind of had to manipulate uh, this a little bit, and I don't know how well we've got it, but no excuses. Here it is. Um, a little revision of uh, David Soul's Don't Give Up On Us, Baby, changed to the title, uh, as we'll sing it, Don't Give Up On Us, Father. And friends, with that, I'm just going to let this sign us out. I think I am, unless I really blow it, I won't come back. I'll just say so long now. Thanks for joining me today. Have a good rest of the Sabbath and a great week upcoming. And then here's, here's our song if you want to sing along with us. Don't give up on us, Father. Father, don't make the Lord see right. Well, friends, let's, let's, let's do a take two on that. I just kind of blew it here. I was trying to change the, uh, the screen size to make it fit a little bit better. It seems like I messed up the screen. Ah, there we go, got it back.
All right, now, I, I, I had it sized for showing that other movie. And let's see, can I get this back? Okay, I think you got the idea what we're going to do. Let's try it. Don't give up on us, Father. Don't make the wrong seem right. The future isn't just one night. It's written in the Bible and spoken in your word. With him we can overcome. Don't give Upon us, Father, we're still worth one more try. I know we put our last one by just for the rainy evening when stars fall from the sky. Don't give up on us with Christ. We can still come through. We slumbered and we slept last night. You've got a reason to reject us. But there's still a little time left to repent. Don't give up on us, Father. Lord knows we've come this far with the oil from you in our jar. The angel and the dreamers who sometimes are not wise. Don't give up on us, Father. We look to you to bring us through. Our music is breaking up. Sorry about that, friends. Just a little more. We'll try to hang with it here. It's written in the Bible And spoken by your word with him we can overcome. We look to you to bring us through. I know we put our last one by before the moon turns to blood and the stars fall from the sky. Don't give up on us with Christ We can overcome All right, friends, I'm just going to come back to say I know that it wasn't your video or screen It was our, our somehow the video music is was messing up We're going to try that again next week I'll try to improve the music If you are skilled at it and want to try improving the lyrics, that'd be great. Fine. I hope, listen, I hope you enjoyed or and were edified, especially I hope you were edified by joining us here today. Again, happy rest of the Sabbath, wonderful week, and remember, Nightcast, Sunday through Thursday nights, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time is our live time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you're up at this hour in the, in London, we're half past midnight live in in on Greenwich Mean Time, 3:30 a.m. in the morning in Israel. We're in the archive anytime on demand. That's Nightcast on the Nightcast.tv channel. All right, friends. Again, thanks for joining us. Happy Sabbath. So long till Sunday night on Nightcast next Sabbath here on the Sabbath Service.tv, cogtv.org channel.